All right. So once again, welcome everyone to today's online workshop. And today the topic is ideas for getting more views on your blog. Um, so uh, I'm Ben and I've lived in Japan ever since I was two years old. So I don't look Japanese, but inside I feel I'm pretty Japanese. Um, I've been a WordPress user since um, 2014. So about eight years now. Um, and for a couple of years, I was a uh, WordPress technical support. Um, so I helped people figure out different issues they were having with their site. Um, and this year I've started to contribute full-time to the WordPress training team, um, which is the team behind these online workshops and tutorials and other educational content about WordPress. Um, so yeah, um, that's a bit about me. And for those who are uh, attending online workshops for the first time, um, welcome. These workshops are intended, uh, intended as sessions where we all learn together. So um, you can ask questions at any time and um, you can ask in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask um, via audio. And I don't have to be the one answering the questions either. So if anybody knows the answer to a question in chat, feel free to um, send that answer in and um, we can all share information with each other. This session will be recorded and we upload it to wordpress.tv so that people who couldn't attend the session can still watch the recording and learn from the content as well. Um, and finally, if you're interested in hosting online workshops, um, at the end of these slides, I will have my contact information and um, you can reach out to me and I can help you uh, figure out how you can host them as well. Uh, which reminds me, I am going to share my slides with you all. Let me just get the link. All right, so these slides will be shared after the session is over as well, but I've just dropped the link in the Zoom chat. Um, so feel free to open that up in your computer, follow along. Um, and if you have any questions, you can um, pause and ask me at any time. All right. So before we jump in, who has a blog? Today, um, a lot of the things we'll be talking about today apply to blogs. Um, so I want to know how many people have a blog and how long have you been blogging? So um, feel free to answer in the Zoom chat. Me personally, I have a blog, um, B Sun's blog. And I think my first post was probably 2018, around November 2018. So, 19, 20, so four years now I've been um, using this blog. You know, you say you have a, you've had a blog since 2006. Wow. Have you always used WordPress or have you used other sites as well? Jonathan, since 2008. WordPress since 2008, Udo, okay. So um, I wonder what version that would have been. Um, Udo and Jonathan, you would have seen WordPress go through many different updates and changes and um, you've seen the whole history of WordPress, I imagine. 1.5, wow, okay. Um, how about other people here? I was on Drupal before WordPress, okay. Does anybody else have a blog? Maybe, or maybe you're thinking about starting a blog and that's totally fine as well. Um, okay. So, you, in my mind, I think people find your blog in two different ways, like two main ways. Um, the first way is through search results. So they look up something um, in a search engine like Google, and then Google suggests um, our blogs as a, a result to that search. Um, and the other way I've just categorized is everything else. So people find your blog either through search results or either in other different ways. And um, 
Preparing a blog for search results is often called search engine optimization or shortened as SEO. Um, and SEO is a whole nother topic on itself. So I will actually be doing a online workshop, um, I think next week. Next week, yeah, next week, um, I'll be doing another online workshop just about SEO, search engine optimization. And today, when we talk about increasing um, views on our blogs, we'll be talking about the everything else section. So not related to search engines, what can we do to increase um, the views on our blogs? So there'll be a slide later on as well where I, I, I um, introduce my session for next week. So if you're interested, please sign up for that. And I hope to see you there as well. But today we're gonna to focus on different ways to get people to our blogs that, doesn't, that don't rely on using search engines, okay? So um, what are some ideas you can try to get more views on your blogs? I've come up with a few, um, sharing your blogs in creative ways, using links to engage your audience, using WordPress categories and tags on your posts, and using keywords to highlight your content, content in search results. So that, that fourth one does tie back to search results, but I'm cheating on my own rules here. But um, hopefully there's enough content here um, to give people just new ideas about how you can get more people to your blog. Before we go into my slides though, I actually wanted to flip this session around and have an open floor discussion first. So for the next 10, 15 minutes, um, I want to ask everybody in the workshop, what do you do to get more views on your blog? Are there different like tricks or tips you've tried? Um, maybe something you've read on another person's blog somewhere and you're thinking about trying it on your site. What ideas um, does everybody in the session today have about getting more views to your blog? Um, you can type in the Zoom chat or you can unmute and um, um, say it out loud. What, what ideas do people have to get more views to your blog? So Jonathan, you say you rely only on auto sharing your posts to Twitter. So do you use a plugin for that? Or uh, yes. There's, yeah. I think, I think it's Jetpack. I think Jetpack has a social sharing feature, and so you okay. can you can set it you can set it up so that as soon as your post gets published, and I think you can, or scheduled, it'll automatically post to to Twitter. All right. So WordPress all plugins. Um, Jetpack social. Yeah. I'm guessing this is the one. All right. So I think I think, I think so. Yeah. I, th I think it's just I think it's just built into Jetpack Core as well. But I think they're busy separating them out now. But I think currently it's still in, in just Core Jetpack. It's just a yep a feature there. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm actually familiar with this plugin as well. And what it does is you connect um, some of your social media accounts. And so when you publish a post on your WordPress site. Um, it automatically also like cross, not cross posts, but like tweets them or post them on your Facebook. Um, and there are a couple of other plugins that do this as well. Um, and I think different plugins might have like free versions and paid for versions, but you definitely sharing on your social media is a good way to try and get more people to your blog. Um, so I actually have a, um, a slide here, which I wanted to write people's ideas down so we can come back to it later. Um, Share to social media. All right. Udo, you say social media as well. So she, you share on Twitter, Facebook. Um, again, what what plugin do you use? Um, if, you, if you're um, happy to share that, I'd like to look it up and share it with the team. Um, so let's see. So Jonathan, you use Um, so I've just um, dropped the link to this plugin in the chat. And then Udo, you say you also use newsletters. Um, so that's a good idea. 
So newsletters, I think, is um, people sign up to your blog or subscribe to your blog so that anytime you publish a new post, um, they get an email about that new post. I actually have that on my site as well. Let's see. Um, so, oh, that's a bit large. But anyway, um, enter your email address below to receive updates from my blog. So I have a subscription field as well. Um, so people can sign up and get updates um, there. So um, newsletter, subscription, Google plugin, WP to Twitter. Okay, so let's look that up. WP to Twitter. And if any other people have other ideas about getting more views to your site, um, continue dropping those in the chat there. Let's see. Post tweets from WordPress to Twitter. Um, okay. So let me share that link here. So I've shared a link to that plugin in the Zoom chat as well. And I could list those ideas down here too. What other things do people do? So that one. That one. Not a lot more ideas coming through. Jonathan, is there anything you've heard of before that other people do that maybe you weren't adventurous enough to try, but you've heard it might work? Not really, no. I'm terrible really. when it comes to marketing <laughs> and that kind of thing. So, <laughs> Okay, no problem. Well, we, we have a good start here. I'm automatically sharing to social media newsletter subscriptions. And maybe this session is perfect for everyone then because I've come, I've come prepared with like 15 slides or something with ideas. So hopefully you can get new ideas here, try them out and maybe grow your audience as well. So my idea is for getting more views on your blog. Um, first of all, my suggestion is to start by asking two questions. What is the goal for your blog? And who is the audience of your blog? So the goal for your blog and the audience of your blog. And I think the answer to these questions will decide what specific like tricks and that are going to work to get more people to your blog. So a goal for a blog, there, there are a number of things that could be a goal. So maybe you're just doing personal journaling. So you don't actually want people to come and see your site. It's just for you to personally keep track of your life. Um, or maybe you're sharing memories with just close family and friends. So you don't actually want people to find you on so, um, search engines. You just want your close relatives and friends to know different updates about you. Or maybe the goal for your blog is to share your experience with the world. Um, in my case, that is actually what I started this for, if I can. So about B-Sun's blog, um, B-Sun's blog started out as a record of my path to reapplying to work at Audemars. Uh, but now I use it to share my life, the life of an automatician living in Japan. So initially I started my blog to share with people how I, I failed to get into Automatic, a company, and how I was like studying and doing all these different things to reapply and get back in again. Um, and as I was doing that, people did contact me and like, asked me for help um, because they were trying to apply to the same company. And so I was able to share my experience with them. Um, and actually one of my followers also joined the company after I did. So that was exciting to see. Um, another goal for your blog might be to provide resources around a certain topic. So this could be like um, recipe blogs. You have um, recipes you want to share with the world. Or maybe you have a, a um, like a tech blog where you want to share different tech tips um, with people. Um, another, another goal for your blog is collecting information from other resources. So you might not be putting out a lot of new content, but you're gathering important information from lots of places and sort of making a, a catalog for people to come to and easily find the additional resources. So there are, there are lots and lots of goals um, for a blog. 
Does anybody in the, the group here want to share what their goal for their blog is? It can be any of the reasons I've listed here. It can be something else. What is, what is the goal for your blog? Or maybe you don't have a goal. You've just started. And that's totally fine too. So Jonathan, you say um, your goal was to originally just a personal journaling of your journey learning PHP. Yep. So that, that would be this first one I've listed here. In which case, maybe you're not too aggressive in getting more people to see your blog. It's just for you to, to publish out there. Yeah. So um, there are different, exactly that, right. All right. So diving deeper into your goals. So once you've figured out what your goal is, there are a couple of questions you can ask. Um, do you want a, a quick place to journal? Like if journaling is all you're doing, do you want a quick place to journal? Um, it may be in that case, like the WordPress app, um, you, using that on your phone gives you a quick way to journal um, and you don't really need to worry about your theme and your plugins and all that. It just, you can write content there for yourself. Um, if you just want your family to have access, then um, maybe you want to set up things on your blog so search engines can't find you. Um, or if, if it's a resource you'll actively share with people, is it a resource you really want to share with other people? Um, do you want the general public to find your blog? Another good question is, are you looking to monetize your blog? So are you wanting to earn money from your blog? Like add, maybe put ads on or um, have, I don't know, pay, um, collect payment from other people so that they can come and post on your blog. Um, if you're looking to monetize your blog, then you you really do want to increase your audience. The more audience you get, probably the more money you'll collect. Um, so diving deeper into your goals helps you understand what, like how you want to promote your site, how much you want to promote your site, how much effort you want to put into that. Um, so once you've clarified your goals, I think it helps you make decisions. Like, should you turn comments on, on your site? Um, if you want it to be an interactive site, um, you can turn comments on. Um, but for example, my wife, she she ha well, she also has a blog, but she doesn't have comments on because she, um, she wants it to be a quiet place where she gives information to the real world rather than a um, active place of communication between lots of people. Um, do you want to add a contact page so people can contact you? In my case, my blog does have a contact page because I, I wanted that interaction with different people. Um, but clarifying your goal will help you make those decisions about your site. Um, do you want a search bar on your site? Do you want people to be able to search through your site and find older posts as well? Or maybe you just want them to see your newest posts. Um, do you want to show ads? Do you want to share your personal information? What will be in your menu? Um, so these are all different decisions you'll make about your site. And once you clarify your goal, it'll help you make those decisions. And then finally, who is your audience? So it, your goals will help you identify who your audience is. Is it just family? In that case, you just want to promote your site to your family. Or maybe it's a ring of close friends, in which case you want to find ways to promote to your friends. Or is it a more wide group of people on the internet like you you want everybody to come and see your site um and then considering what interests them so this is going to help you decide how to promote your blog because you want to promote your blog with things that interest your audience so what questions do they have that you can answer or what delights them what can you post on your site that delights them how can you promote your site that brings joy to them or maybe there's, there's something your audience is struggling with. How can you help them? And so once you ask these questions and clarify your, your goals and your audience, this gives you a bit of a framework as you figure out how to exactly promote your site. Um, okay. And so 
Um, what I've listed here are different ways for you to get to know your audience a bit more. Like maybe um, you can place surveys on your blog. Um, you can ask people for feedback about your blog. Like even if it's just for family, you can, actually, you can ask your family, what did you think about my blog? Get feedback from them, apply it to your blog, and hopefully you can make it a more attractive blog to your family. Um, and if you have a larger blog and you start to get different people following you and subscribing to your blog, then you can check out their blogs too to see, find out maybe how they are doing promotion. How are they letting people know about their content? How are they growing their audience? And get hints from them as well. So uh, the first step into growing your audience is asking yourself two questions, what the goal is for your blog and who your audience is for your blog. And that will set the framework for then how specifically, um, what, what specifically can you do to grow your audience? Um, so next, we'll, we'll, we'll start talking about the creative ways you can share your blog. Are there any questions so far about asking these questions about your goals, clarifying your goals, clarifying your audience? In like, um, like general marketing world, um, professional marketing people also start with these questions. Um, who, what is the goal for their, their site, whatever they're trying to promote? Who is the audience? And this helps them clarify their marketing strategies uh, for their products or for their sites or for their services. Um, so these questions are actually something I, I borrowed from that marketing environment, something we can also ask ourselves as we try to promote our blogs. All right, no questions coming in. So now let's dive into the actual ways you can um, try and grow more um, audience on your blog. And the first one I listed was share to social media. So Udo and Jonathan, you've already got that one done. Um, announce your post on social media. Um, and I've listed, you can connect plugins to automatically do this for you. So I've left a few links in the Zoom chat here. Um, and something you can do is like manually share your content on social media as well. So if you're, um, if you're chatting with someone on social media and maybe they, they bring up a topic you've already posted about in the past, um, go ahead and copy that link, paste it there and say, yeah, actually I have some ideas about this. Check out my blog. Um, and you can read about it there. So um, you can do automatic promotion through plugins, but you can also do manual promotion on social media. And I think many times blogs are about topics that are relevant to our lives. And so just casually sharing it with your friends um, or people you interact with um, can be a good way to generate more people to come and see your blog. Um, so using social media, definitely. And the next one I wrote was allowing people to subscribe to your blog. So Udo, you've got that one down as well. Um, set up a subscription form on your blog. And I've written, you can use plugins for this. Um, and um, yeah, so this one was covered before as well. If you're looking for an active interactions and post comments, use a plugin that allows people to follow comment threads as well. So some plugins add a subscription form to your site, um, but some plugins can also add like a subscription form to comment threads. So people can follow the site itself, but if there's an interesting conversation going on in the comments, people can subscribe to those comments and get updates when somebody else comments in that thread. Um, so if, if you want your comments to become an active, part of your site, then turning something on like that um, will actually um, be a good idea as well. Another thing you can do is read and comment on other blogs. So depending on what comment plugin um, people are using, when you comment on somebody else's site, um, sometimes you have to log in and make an account. Sometimes you have to share a bit of a, bit of a bio um, about yourself and you can actually slip your own blog link into your bio there. Um, I don't recommend like promoting your site in comments on other people's sites, like the comments are about that person's content. Um, so just 
writing randomly, come check out my site, isn't a good promotional um, strategy. But you can um, put the link in your comment bio. And then when people see you making interesting comments or meaningful comments to the conversation, they might check your bio out and then notice your site link and come over to your site and see what you're doing there as well. Um, so something I mentioned earlier was checking out people who come to your site, seeing what they do uh, for their promotions. And you can do the same with the other way around as well. So put your link in your different um, bios and introductions so people can come back to your site when they find you interesting and they want to engage more with you. Um, yep. Another thing you can do is sharing your blog on business cards. So this is something my wife actually does. She has printed physical cards um, with her blog URL. So when she meets somebody at events or in social activities um, and she introduces herself, she always hands them this card, which has a link to her blog. Um, and people can come to her blog and find out more about her there. And it's a good way to keep a connection with people. People have um, met her and then um, sent a contact form in to stay connected with my wife. And so the business cards have actually helped in the past to generate an audience there. Um, not all of, well, no, no that, that's not accurate. Some companies aren't using business cards anymore. Um, so business cards are starting to fade away, um, but it's a good way if you have a lot of um, real life connections with people, then this is another way you can share your blog with them. <clears throat> Jonathan. I found the comments I do approve on my own blog that have links are those that are adding value to the blog post. Okay, so going back to the comments section here, um, comments you approve on your blog that have links are those that are adding value to the blog post. So um, commenting on other people's blogs is one way to get engagement and um, let other people know about, just, like just that you exist out there, that your blog is out there, and when people find um, value in what you're saying, they will come back. So Jonathan has proven my point here that this does help. And I, I imagine, Jonathan, you've probably checked out a few people's blogs that way as well to see what, what they're like. Yep. Let's see, what other ideas do we have? So talk about your blog with real life friends. Um, when I started my blog, I was very nervous. Um, it was like the first time I was putting myself out there in the world. And it took me a couple of weeks before I, I actually started bringing it up in conversations with people. I was sort of, it was my secret identity for a while. But now if I think about it, um, I wish I'd talked about it more sooner. So more people would have found out about it and given me feedback too. Like maybe there was something on the site that was difficult for them to figure out or Maybe there was a particular topic or post they, they found interesting. Um, so just talking about your blog with real life friends can generate an audience to your site. Um, so for example, I started a blog six months ago. I now have 20 followers. Come check my site out. Um, I think this is something very similar to what I said to say my parents um, when I talked to them about my blog. Um, or um, when you meet someone who you think they've been following your blog but might not have checked out recent articles, you can say something like, did you read my last blog post? I shared photos from my trip to the beach last week. So um, if, if, if in conversation you get a sense that maybe they haven't been checking your blog out recently, then you can casually bring your blog up in conversation and generate another audience member there. Um, or the third example I wrote here is, I know you love chocolate. So I wrote this post all about chocolate bunnies this week, thinking of you, come have a look. Um, I've never written a post about chocolate bunnies, but this is some random idea that came in my mind. Um, just talking about your articles and things you're interested in um, is another way to grow your audience um, in real life connections. This is an idea somebody else brought to me, and that is to print your URL on a t-shirt and wear it to events. 
So like if you're an active member in different communities and um, you think your blog content would be interesting to that community, print it on your t-shirt, wear it to an event, and then it can become a conversation starter. So you can think outside the box and come up with these like creative ideas to share your site with different people. Something else I wrote here was um, printing your blog URL on mugs and hanging them out in your neighborhood. Maybe your, your blog is content about local events and um, people in your community, like right where you're living might be interested as well. So that's one way to get people to know your blog. Um, and then adding your blog URL to holiday or birthday cards you send out to people. So if, if you mail cards out to people, add a URL to your blog and they might come in, um, check out what you've been publishing there. So that was, that was a bit of a, a longer list there, but sharing to social media, allowing readers to subscribe, read and comment on other people's blogs, share your blog on business cards, talk about your blog with real life friends, print your URL on a t-shirt and wear it to events, and just get creative um, sharing your blog in real life situations. So let me pause there. Um, are there any questions or comments or any other ideas you came up with where we can creatively share our blogs with other people? Jonathan says, um, you have no questions, but you're definitely going to start using some of these. Um, next time you co-host, you can wear a t-shirt with your blog URL on it. <laughs> That's yep. exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, it was? Okay. <laughs> um, the, only, the only problem I have is my, my blog domain is my full name.com. So it's going to be the full jonathanbossinger.com. <laughs> So we're going to have to somehow make it like across each other or something. Yeah. Um, was that like 25 letters or something? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I find like... Hmm? I need, sorry, I was going to say, I need, a, I need a cool nickname like you that I can just use. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I live in Japan, um, for those, um, some people might know, in Japan, they add sun to people's names. Um, so I would be Ben Sun. And that's where my blog domain came from. I'm, the B is for Benjamin and I'm a son. So Ben B Sun's blog. Um, so yeah. The, re the other reason why I did that is because there are so many Benjamins in the world that a domain name that uses the word Benjamin is probably already taken already. I tried like 15 different options trying to find a domain with Benjamin. It just wasn't out there. Um, all right, so those are different ways um, you can share your blog and grow your audience. Something else I wanted to talk about, um, which is a little more technical, but that is using links to engage your audience. So once people come to your blog, you want them to be interested in what you're writing there and you want them to stay there as long as possible uh, so they can read more content, find more interesting stuff, and then hopefully they'll go back and share that with their friends and family as well. And one way to keep them on your site is to use links. So you can use links in a couple of ways. Uh, one of them is um, linking to your other posts in your content. So um, if you're like writing a series, um, then or oh, linking to your previous posts so people can go back and check those out. Um, or even if you've written similar content in the past by linking to that similar content, um, People can open another post and spend another few minutes there checking out your site. Um, linking to other content on your site is called internal linking um, and is a good way to grow engagement on your site. Something I like to do is set links to open in a new tab so that people don't lose where they were reading in their current content. Um, so in WordPress, you can turn a setting on so that links open in a new tab. And that's one way to help people keep the current tab open, but still open a related article in a new tab. So linking to other posts. 
Another thing to consider is what do people see after reading a post? So like physically on the screen, what do they see when they get to the bottom of a post? Um, do they see a, script, a subscription form? Do they see links to related articles? Do they see excerpts of another post? Maybe a short biography of who is writing the post? Um, so um, specifically, let's use my blog here as an example. So um, I, this is my most recent um, article here. And so you scroll all the way down. So if somebody reads this far, ta-da, that's me and my wife. Um, so if somebody reads this far, what do they see at the bottom of your post? And this is where you can either connect them to um, other articles in your site or keep them reading, keep them engaged. Or if there's nothing else to click on, people can disappear. So open your site, have a look at the very bottom of the post and see what options you offer. For example, I have here links to similar categories um, or tags um, in, this, in, in this article. So for example, if somebody clicks on food, they'll be able to find all the other articles about food on my blog. So hopefully that's one way to keep them engaged. Um, if you, and you see, I have a comments area here. If you go further, hmm, I have links to my social media accounts and a subscription form. But I don't know, maybe looking at this now, they do have to scroll down quite a bit before they find the subscription form. So if I want to increase engagement on my site, maybe I could bring the subscription form further up. So it's right here after the after the blog post content finishes. Um, so before I lose people, they know they can sign up. Um, let's have a look at another blog and um, see what they have at the bottom of the site. I'm offering the wordpress.org site. There was a blog here. They recently updated the, the, um, the menus at the top. And I thought there was a link here to the WordPress blog. Is that it? Nope. Is that it? I think it's, I, there I we think go. it's just news. news. Yeah, just the, fir okay. the first link there. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so let's open their most recent um, post. Scroll down to the bottom and see what, oh, oh. so you can see here they, they're using a lot of internal linking here to um, connect people with other resources in the WordPress field, um, keep them connected. All right, and then at the very bottom, you can see the WordPress blog has all these different links here, um, which connect to other sections of the site. Um, Let's see, there's a link here to the previous article. So if you want to go back one article and read that, you can do that. Um, and then links here to the different um, authors of the post. So that's probably even more simpler than my blog even. So not as many links there, but this is just an activity you can do on your site. Pull up one of your posts, go to the very bottom. What would people do once they get to the very bottom of that post? And something else I recommend doing is doing it on mobile. So on desktop, this is, this is about all that fits into a screen. So I realized my subscription form isn't there and I might wanna bring that up so it's a bit more prominent to people. How does your site look on mobile? One way you can do that is using the inspect tool. I'm using Google Chrome, so it's called inspect. Um, different browsers call it different things, but there's a tool and usually there's an option to toggle your site to the mobile view. So this helps you sort of see what your site looks like on mobile. You can also open your site on your mobile phone and check it there as well. Um, so if you come to the bottom of the post, um, so I see again that the categories and tags are listed here, um, but they do have to scroll down a bit more before they find the subscribe field. So maybe I could add like images of related posts here. 
and maybe the images would capture people's attentions and help them stay engaged on the site. Um, let's see what the wordpress.org blog looks like. So you come to the bottom of the post, there's a link to the previous post, um, link to the author's profiles, and then you have a list of different menu items here. So for different other pages on the wordpress.org website. Um, so that's an activity you can do to see how, um, is there anything there inviting people to stay on your site and stay engaged? Okay. Um, and then something else I wanted to share is using categories and tags to engage your audience. So you saw my blog, I have um, categories, so like the category food. If you open that up, you can see I've got a good number of blogs related to food there. Um, and then I've also got different um, tags here. So let's see if you click on the birthday tag, I actually have a couple of posts related to birthdays as well. And so categories and tags um, have a, a few um, positive effects on your site. And one of them is to keep people engaged with your content. They can pull up um, other related posts um, that are part of those categories or tags and stay engaged. Um, and then in the WordPress, in the core WordPress, there are three blocks here that I wanted to um, recommend. The categories block, the tag cloud block, and the query loop block. These all use categories and tags, and you can actually show posts from different categories or posts from different, using different tags at the bottom of your pages. Um, so looking at my blog, that's, that's probably something I can do as well here. At the moment, I just list the categories and tags, but maybe I could add a query loop blog. So people actually see an image and maybe even an excerpt of a related post um, and then click on that and keep them engaged. So using categories and tags is a good way to keep people there. Um, oh, and one thing I recommend, once you start using categories and tags, you can you can end up with hundreds of categories and tags. Like um, me, I've been blogging for four years and I think I have like 150, even 200 tags. Um, and so per periodically go back and just organize those categories and tags. Um, do any of your categories need renaming? Um, so maybe it started off as snacks, but when you look back, you realize you're posting food articles that aren't specifically snacks. So maybe you should retitle snacks to food. Um, or maybe should you create subcategories? Maybe snacks should be a subcategory of food. And then you also have like breakfast and dinner. And so you have the different, um, just come back and organize your categories. Um, so when people click on them, they are getting targeted content related to those categories and tags. All right, so I listed a couple of ways there, ways there to use links to keep your audience engaged. Link to other posts. Um, what links do people see at the bottom of the post to keep them engaged? Um, and one thing you can use are categories and tags to keep your audience there. Um, so they click on related articles and keep reading. All right. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about was keywords, but before we jump in, were there any questions or comments so far? All right, well, let's jump into keywords. Keywords to highlight your content in search results. So, Next week, we'll be talking more about search engine optimization. Um, and if you click on this, this image in the slides I shared, that will take you to next week's online workshop page. So you can sign in, register, and attend that one as well. Um, and we'll be talking about keywords a lot more um, in detail there. But for the moment, I just want to take a quick look at keywords and see how we can use those to improve um, or to, to get more audience to our site. So keywords, are what people use, the words people use to search for your content. Um, so what do people use, search for 
when they try to find your blog. Um, so for example, a keyword for my blog might be B Sun. I have no idea if this will work well, but if, if you type B Sun, um, no, <laughs> B Sun blog. Now, BSUN is probably not a good keyword for my site. Um, but what, what keywords do people use to find your site? For example, source created from tomatoes. Are people going to search for source created from tomatoes or are they going to search for tomato sauce? So probably in this case, tomato sauce is the keyword you want to focus on. Um, and there are tools out there that help you. Um, oh, and Jonathan, you say yours is just your name. Let's, I'd, I'd be interested to see if that comes up. So let me see, let's see, there you go. So if I search for your name, ta-da! All right, so that's your, that's your blog and your name does bring it up. So I'd like to actually, I was, I was, I was joking, obviously if my name would come up, but one of the keywords I was actually targeting for when I was working as a freelancer was the word codable. Um, so I'd like to see if Codable still comes up, uh, either one? Codable or Codable, yeah, Codable or Codable Review. Um, so um, that's that's the Codable site. Okay, and if you search for Codable Review, because at one point I was I was actively trying to, this when I was a freelancer, uh, and I just want to see if mine comes up in that list. Any, there it is. Oh, here so it, is. it still comes up for one, yeah, Codable Review. Two, three, four. Fifth one down, so that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this probably won't work because there are a ton of Benjamin Evans. <laughs> yeah, there was when I was when I was working as a freelancer, I was specifically targeting um, that word because people were searching for reviews of the of the company, okay. and then hopefully finding my blog post, and then from there hopefully hiring me. So that was a a thing that I did for a while. Okay. All right. Um, well, Benjamin Evans, let's get in pretty specific. That did bring my face up. Um, so next week, we're talking about search engine optimization. And then in November, I'm actually doing another session about image SEO, image search engine optimization. Um, and so this image is probably very optimized for search engines, which is why it came up with this name. Um, but anyway, that's another topic we plan on coming um, to next month. So there's a tool here to see how people search for similar sites. So um, what is a, a similar site? So, well, what, what you would do is you'd find a site out there that's similar to what you want to write and see what people type to search for that site. Um, so it doesn't really work well if you use your own site, if you're just starting out because people haven't really been searching for your site. Um, but just to show what this tool does, I'll type my blog domain in there. Um, let's just keep that. United States, all right, let's see how it goes. So what this tool is doing is figuring out what people have searched for in the past to pull my site up. Okay. And um, life, work, work, community, work, life, manage life. Okay, so these seem like keywords people use have found my site in search results and landed on it. Um, so what you would do is do this for similar sites to yours, similar sites, see what people are searching for to find those sites, and those would become the keywords for your site. Once you've figured out what your keywords are, you would want to stick to those same phrases in your site. So for example, that tomato sauce example before, if, tomato, if you've identified tomato sauce as a keyword, then you want to use that set phrase tomato sauce in different places in your site. You don't want to keep switching it out for source created from tomatoes or um, tomato, uh, to saucy tomatoes, or I don't know, but you don't want to rephrase it. You want to keep to the same words and if you keep to the same words throughout your site, search engines are gonna automatically pick up that that's probably a keyword you're aiming for. Um, you then want to add keywords in prominent locations like your site title and tagline, 
um, post titles, post excerpts, and also use your keywords naturally throughout your content. So this site says life work is a keyword on my site, on my blog. And that's probably because my tagline says the work and life of a community education manager in Japan. So search engines have identified my tagline and taken words out of that and figured that must be the keyword on my site. Um, so identify your keywords, use them in prominent locations and use them throughout your content. And by doing that, when search engines, um, when people search for those keywords, search engines are more likely to bring those up um, and show your site in results. So in Jonathan's example, it was um, codable review. So I imagine at one point you were using those words maybe in your site or targeting those audiences. Um, so these were the keywords you would sort of naturally plant in your site. Um, but we'll talk about keywords more next week in um, search engine optimization. So if you want to know more about that, um, do come join my session next week and we can look into that in more detail. So we've been talking about a lot. So I just wanted to sort of um, give a summary of what we've discussed today. Um, different ways you can use to grow your audience. One of them is to share your blog in creative ways, print it on mugs, share it in conversation, real life friends. Um, manually send links on social media so people can link on that and come back, check your site out. Another thing we talked about is using links to engage your audience. So once they do come, to keep them there so that they keep reading and engaging in your content. And one way to do that is to use WordPress categories and tags. And there are different blocks that also um, help you use those categories and tags to link pe people to different um, content. Um, and finally, we briefly touched on keywords to highlight your content in search results, but we'll be talking about that more next week in more detail. Um, so anything you'd like to, to ask or share, if there are any final questions you, uh, we didn't cover today, feel free to drop that in the Zoom chat. Um, and then I just wanted to um, add one more note. Thank you for attending today. Um, in the training team, WordPress training team right now, we are conducting a individual learner survey. And what this is, is we want to figure out what do you want to learn about WordPress? How do you like to learn? Do you like videos? Do you like live sessions? Do you like text-based courses? Um, do you like learning in groups? Do you like to learn on your own? Uh, we just want to figure out what people, how people like to learn so we can make content um, tailored towards our audience. So um, I've left a link here to the individual learner survey. Um, do fill that out and that will help us create more content in the future um, aimed at what interests you. So I just wanted to give a brief announcement about that. Um, and finally, you'll see a link to my site profile and my Twitter handle. So if there are any questions about this session, feel free to reach out there. Um, and then that's all I have for today. So thank you. Arta, Stephen, and Udo for staying. And thank you, Jonathan, for co-hosting. And I look forward to seeing everyone in my next session. Arta, thank you. It was very interesting, as always. I'm glad you found it interesting. And hopefully, I'm looking forward to seeing Jonathan wearing a T-shirt with his blog URL on it Sunday. So make sure you check out his um, online workshops as well. Um, and we'll see what if he ever does that. All right, then I'll finish the recording. Thank you, everyone, and have a good rest of your day. Bye.